It's so important for everyone to know about invasive species because it affects everyone. We want to be able to take our kids to national parks and see beautiful landscapes and not a sea of sweet clover and bittersweet and cattail. I'm Laura Thompson, Biotech at Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore, and I love to remove invasive species from natural habitats. This is yellow sweet clover, really pretty yellow plant, but it's a non-native invasive species, and we want to pull it out of nice habitats like this to get rid of it before it gets rid of all the native species in this area. park having so many edges with railroads and roads, we have a lot of areas that are really easily infested because they're disturbed areas. Well, or, you know, bittersweet in particular uh, is very bad because it can take trees that are century old and grow up to the top of them. tree and it just girdles it and that's one way they'll kill the tree is girdling it. It's a garden plant and in gardens they look nice but out here it can literally pull trees down and if unchecked you know 50 years from now we're not going to have any tall trees they're all going to be on the ground covered with bittersweet. I know it takes me an hour to clear out one tree when it's heavily infested. but then I've saved that tree for another 10, 15, 20 years. I am so passionately in love with this area. I've seen what invasives do to these great native habitats. I want to make every part of my day to prevent these areas from disappearing. My name is Steve Yancho. I'm Chief of Natural Resources at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. Uh, it's interesting that uh, USGS has described us as the poster child of invasive species. These are some real nasty players right here. This is spotted knapweed. It's one of those plants that tends to exclude other plants once it comes in. And so the biodiversity is missing. It's no longer there. And when everything's in balance, everything tends to work. When things come into this system, such as a non-native plant, they're in here without the checks and balances that the native vegetation has, and so they just go hog wild. This plant right here is Pitcher's Thistle. We have to try and maintain this habitat since this is one of the last real strongholds for this plant in this dune system here. This plant really relies on the fact that the sands move. So if the sands don't move, the seed heads don't get buried very easily. When you have things like baby's breath, spotted knapweed, or a lot of vegetation that normally is in here, they tend to lock the sand down. The sand doesn't move. The pitcher's thistle plant is going to be a loser. It's going to eventually drop out of the system. A lot of the dune plants are very fragile. Here's, here's some beach pea right in front of us here. It's a, a plant that's you know, become accustomed to this open beach environment. This is black locust. It's a species of tree that is not native to our area of the country. It's a highly invasive plant that actually has a negative impact on the native plants. Every time the trailer goes off, that we've loaded. Oh, I, we just did that. I mean, we can't do a lot, but we can do a little. I guess that equals a lot in the end.
people don't in intend uh, to move invasive plants from place to place. They just happen to be stuck in their boot laces or in the treads of their boots or, uh, while they're walking along. And so the biggest way to stop the spread of invasive species would be uh, cleaning your boots, cleaning your gear. Anytime you're, you're leaving an area that may be infested or, or before you enter a, a new natural area. One person can make a difference. One step at a time, you can change the world.